Imagine a bright future where flipping a switch doesn't cost a dime. Back in the late 1960s, a Hungarian-born engineer named Joseph Papp claimed he had built a machine to do just that. He called it the inert gas engine, a generator that needed no gasoline, only harmless noble gases and electric sparks. Can you tell me what is the fuel for your engine? The fuel is, can be the inert gases, as Pap says, but I have already said in 2003 and reported in Infinity Energy magazine, and my patent is based on it, that we can use just plain air. Through the magic of what Heinz and I are doing here, we're going to create uh, a kinetic energy out of uh, air. According to Pap and those who saw it run, this silent motor could power a car or a home indefinitely with no fuel. But soon, tragedy and mystery would strike before the world could experience its promise. Josef Papp was an unlikely hero of the free energy dream. He studied engineering in Hungary and emigrated to North America around 1957. By the mid-1960s, he was in California, tinkering in his garage. Papp was eccentric and passionate. He believed he had unlocked a new kind of power. He patented a special gas mixture and claimed it could drive engines without burning fuel. In interviews, he described filling cylinders with inert gases like argon, neon, and helium, then triggering them with an electric spark. To Pap, this wasn't science fiction. It was the future of energy. He even imagined a day when cars and houses ran on nothing but these noble gases, cutting fuel costs to zero. Pop's core idea was startling, a fuelless engine. Instead of burning gasoline or diesel, his engine used a sealed charge of inert noble gas. These gases, neon, argon, helium, and others, are normally non-reactive. Think of neon lights or helium balloons. Pop claimed that under a high-voltage spark, the gas inside the cylinder would suddenly ionize into a plasma and explode with force. That expansion would push the piston just like a normal fuel explosion does. In effect, the engine would run on nothing but noble gas and electricity. No fuel tank needed, no exhaust fumes. To the believers, it was like capturing lightning in a box. To see the magic, here's a simplified step-by-step -step of the PAP engine cycle. Sealed inert gas chamber. Each cylinder was hermetically sealed and filled with a special mix of inert gases, neon, argon, helium, etc. Electric pulse. Ignition, a high voltage spark was sent into the chamber, jolting the gas into a plasma. This caused it to expand rapidly, almost like a mini explosion. Piston drive. The expanding plasma force pushed the piston down converting the energy into mechanical motion, just like a normal combustion engine stroke. Electrical output. That motion turned an alternator or generator. In demonstrations, this electrical output could even feed back to keep the spark system charged and could power lights or devices, even extra to power a house. Reset cycle. Once the pulse ended, the gas cooled and contracted back to its original state, ready for the next spark. Repeating this cycle made the engine keep running without any new fuel. This cycle supposedly let Pap's engine run continuously, with only electricity for the spark and a periodic gas recharge as input. In other words, endless power from a sealed gas charge, if it really worked that way. The performance of Pap's inert gas engine was equally astounding. According to his team's tests and estimates, horsepower. A small prototype with two cylinders running at only 1,000 RPM produced about 150 horsepower, roughly 110 kilowatts. That's more power than many car engines, and all at very low engine speed. 
torque. The engine reportedly made around 800 foot-pounds of torque, immense pulling force. This meant blistering acceleration could be delivered from a gentle hum. Long runtime. A single sealed gas charge could last thousands of hours. PAPS associates claimed about 6,000 hours of running time. Roughly two years of normal driving, about eight hours a day, before needing a refill. Only a couple of recharges per year would keep it going. Zero emissions. Since no fuel was burned, the engine produced virtually no exhaust or heat. It ran cool and quiet, no smoke, no fumes, just clean energy conversion. Notice. Generating electricity. Electric power for home. Hooked to a generator, its output could easily power a house or workshop. One engine's output would cover typical home electricity use, lighting, appliances, gadgets, essentially eliminating the power bill, as long as you refilled the gas twice a year. Scalable potential. In theory, adding more cylinders or building bigger chambers would multiply the power. PAP envisioned engines that could drive cars, boats, or even buildings on this zero-cost fuel model. In short, PAP's engine was said to outperform conventional engines by orders of magnitude, all without consuming gasoline. It was the stuff of energy fantasies, promising a world without power bills. By 1968, word of the strange engine was spreading among enthusiasts. Pop set up demonstrations to prove his claim. In big hangars and labs, he showed off his cylinders humming along on nothing but inert gas. The prototype glowed softly, and pistons moved as it generated electricity through an alternator. Spectators were stunned. Here was an engine running on nothing but noble gas and electricity. Journalists and engineers wrote excitedly about this engine from another planet. For a moment, it seemed like the free energy era had arrived. Journalists and engineers wrote excitedly about this engine from another planet. For a moment, it seemed like the free energy era had arrived. Then came the fateful moment. Pop organized a high-stakes public test in California. Among the audience were skeptics and believers alike. Even the famous physicist Richard Feynman took notice. As the engine roared to life, all seemed triumphant. But suddenly, without warning, the machine detonated violently. Shrapnel flew, an enormous blast filled the hall, and panic erupted. In that instant, the dazzling demo turned to horror. A technician was killed on the spot and others were injured. In the chaos, some suspected sabotage while others thought it a tragic accident. The violent outcome only deepened the mystery surrounding the invention. After the explosion, the scientific community reacted strongly. Newspapers and physicists were quick to call the whole thing a hoax. They argued that inert gases couldn't possibly release energy the way Papp claimed. It violated known physics. Nobel laureate Richard Feynman reportedly said Papp's explanations made no sense and suggested he was trying to fool people. The term perpetual motion started being whispered, implying an impossible machine. To the press, Pop's patents looked like wishful thinking or a naive dream. In short, Pop's engine became just another cautionary tale, a flashy overhyped invention in the pages of science magazines. Despite the skepticism, Pop didn't immediately give up. He pursued business deals trying to sell the engine to industry. Allegedly, he pitched it to major companies in the auto and energy sectors. He claimed to have walked into boardrooms saying, I have the future of energy for sale. But in every case, he got nowhere. Some say executives simply laughed him off as a crank. Others whisper that he was quietly brushed aside, as if nobody wanted to acknowledge how disruptive this tech could be. Ultimately, the industry's answer was silence. From here on, the legend only grew darker. 
To conspiracy-minded observers, the inert gas engine became a textbook case of suppressed technology. The tale took on all the familiar elements. Greedy oil companies, secret meetings, and a genius silenced. Rumors flew that corporations bought up or stole Pap's patents and then buried them in vaults. Some even claimed spies sabotaged the demonstration to sow doubt. It's the classic suppressed technology story, a man on the verge of revolutionizing energy, only to see his work hidden away. Even the government got involved in a way. Pap and his supporters wrote letters to energy agencies and politicians asking for help. In fact, one retired admiral was so intrigued, he reportedly wrote directly to President Carter about the engine. Some sources say the Department of Energy quietly reviewed the case, but in the end, the official reaction was one of polite skepticism. Stick to oil and nuclear seemed to be the unspoken message. No grants came, no official tests were made. The bureaucracy moved on as if nothing extraordinary had ever happened. Joseph Papp himself was a character out of a novel. Colleagues described him as brilliant but erratic, a bit paranoid. He always dressed sharply with a bow tie and a gleam in his eye. He complained of being spied on and sometimes broadcast wild theories. He even told stories about a jet-propelled submarine he built in Canada. To many engineers he met, Papp seemed his own worst enemy, unpredictable and long on storytelling. But to his fans, he was a misunderstood genius fighting the good fight. Love him or hate him, Pop truly believed in his engine, which made the whole drama even more intense. By the late 1970s and 1980s, Joseph Pop's public appearances stopped. He kept tinkering in garages and filing patents, but he never found the funds to go commercial. In April 1989, Pap passed away quietly at age 55. He died before seeing any engine reach the market. His patents eventually expired, and the ideas became public domain. But by then, his workshop had shut down. The inert gas engine slipped into legend as another strange footnote in history.